So this exercise is something that you should be doing every single day. I do it every day of my life. I call it the four finger scale. Call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter what style of music you play. You can be playing with a pick. You can be playing bluegrass. It doesn't matter. But the idea is coordination in both hands and using all fingers of the left hand. So I'm going first, second, third, fourth. It doesn't matter what fret we're on either. Go all the way to the floor and come back. That is a great baseline exercise that you need to be able to do no matter the style. And in this lesson, we're gonna look at five great ways that you can take this exercise and mix it up to get better at your dexterity and your speed, your control, your volume, all those things. And this idea is the idea of muscle confusion. Once you get good at something, you gotta mix it up to keep your fingers on their toes. Okay, so I'm playing nylon string guitar. So in the right hand, I'm using these two fingers, index and middle. But speaking of muscle confusion, you could come over here and just use your thumb, thumb rest strokes, thumb free strokes. You could use these two fingers, your middle and your ring, rest strokes, free strokes. But for this entire video, I'm just gonna stick to doing piccolo technique because this is really just about the left hand. And a piccolo technique is index and middle rest strokes. Okay, the first way to mix up this exercise is to change positions. So if you start down here in the first position, which is a great position uh, because it's a horrible position, right? We start off playing down here in the first position, but that's where things are hardest to play because the frets are so far apart. If you play up here, a little bit easier because you don't have to spread out so much. But um, I like to start like in the middle when I do this, this daily thing, I'll probably start right in the middle of the guitar. But if I started down here, the first fret is move it up one fret each time. Nothing groundbreaking, right? But even doing that is a great practice in shifting position, which we need to get good at, right? Make sure that we're in between the frets every time. Once that gets comfortable, then start to make wider jumps like this. I went all the way to the fifth fret. Now, if I kept doing that, I'm gonna run out of space. So you can do things like this. I used to do this all the time. First fret, fifth fret, first, fifth, first, you really got to get up there quickly and it's pretty tough when you come back um, and I would encourage you to do this exercise no matter what variation you do um, doing it backwards more than you do it forwards because going backwards with your starting with your pinky is a lot harder to do I think because we're leading with that weak finger the pinky and your pinky does not like that changing positions. Second way to confuse your fingers is changing the finger order. Now we had one, two, three, four. What if we did, there's so many ways we could do this. One, three, two, four. That already is pretty weird. Check this out. Then backwards would be four, two, three, one. How about one, two, four, three? could go on and on but let's try one four three four two four great for your pinky and backwards we could try to flip it or just do the same thing returning but if we did go backwards it would be four one three one two one Number three is taking fingers out of this equation. So instead of doing one, two, three, four, we can go one, three, four, for example. And now that throws a monkey wrench into your right hand because now we're doing we're working with triplets instead of four notes per string, we're playing three times per string. One, two, four. We could just do two fingers, like two and three, which are so bound by the same ligament, I think, right? and they just kind of don't cooperate. That's true of both hands. So it's very much worth doing something like this. This is the same idea, right, of the four finger exercise, only now we're using two fingers, but there's just no end to all the different variations we can do this way. And by the way, if we have four fingers here, we have six possible variations of pairs of fingers, if you wanna absolutely nerd out on that stuff. That would be one and two, two and three, three and four, one and four, one and three, and two and four. So take each of those pairs and do those as an exercise to the floor and back. Fourth way is to do groups of three. Now this is something that you could apply to any scale that you play. So check out this scale. It's a major scale, right? I'm gonna go one, two, three, then go to the second note and go from there again, one, two, three. Okay, how do we apply this to the four finger thing? We're just going one, two, three, then go to the second note third note then we have to jump back to this fourth note and you see this in a million different classical or any style of music 
um, practice method books as an exercise. You may have seen this before. That's pretty much the same thing, except we're not gonna worry about open strings here. So I'm going like this. So we get the sound of triplets, groups of three. Come back. Fifth and final one, groups of four. You could come up with a million other ones on your own, and I encourage you to try to do that. What are the other ways that you can vary this? Groups of four, though, would be this. One, two, three, four, two, three, four, one. Okay, we're just going counting to four, then go to the second note, and we go from there. So it's interesting. We can hear the scale ascending slowly as you do this. So back to this major scale again. One, two, three, four. That's groups of four in a scale. And with our four finger exercise, we have this. Now here's a bonus variation on this four finger exercise. Check this out. Instead of taking your fingers off, that's really the way that we should normally do it. It's just relax, don't throw your fingers away. But when you're done with a finger, when this finger comes down, for example, relax it off the string. Don't throw it. We don't want it to go way out like this. So we should be pretty close to the string. But if you practice it this way, check this out. Leave them all down. Okay, everything's down here. Now I'm gonna go to the next string and I'm only gonna take a finger off when I have to take it off to play that next note. That is tough to do. It's kind of a bad habit, I would say, because we're using extra tension that we don't need. But what it really forces you to do is get the optimal in most cases, especially when you're playing a chord where you need to not bang into the next string. It helps you get right on your fingertip at an angle that doesn't block the next string. So this is a great little exercise to work on just that. But ultimately, when you play, you're not gonna leave. I, I don't think we should leave our fingers down. That's an exercise variation that only works when we go to the floor, right? We're gonna go leave everything down. And just be careful to not block the string underneath. Hope you like this video. If you're into nylon string, check out my workshop where I show you the three most essential techniques for the right hand and exactly how to play them. A lot of people are doing it wrong and it's gonna save you hundreds of hours of practice time if you get it right the first time. So that was mainly for the left hand, although it's a great right hand exercise too in coordination. I was using that picado technique. Check out this video where I drill down on exactly what we need to perfect that technique.